Okay, Premiere Pro updated again, this time to Premiere Pro Beta 25.1 which has brought us some actually decently cool stuff. I think I haven't yet to test it, but I wanted to make a video about it since I kind of didn't realize this was a thing and it's been out for at least a month now, I, I'm pretty sure. That being said, in this video, we're gonna talk about five features, the five main features that this has brought along with some bug fixes, which it brought, but we're not talking about those. And of course, since it's in beta, they might not stick around, but for the time being, we're gonna talk about what we have and then how we might use it in the future and just check it out real quick. Those five features, as you see here, are generative extend, which is an AI powered extension thing, right? It allows you to extend the footage past its actual length using AI to obviously fill in gaps and, and like, you know, suffice for when you don't have the footage. I would say it's probably not best to use it for footage, for real footage, but it probably will help merge that missing point, which is like very, very cool if it's good. I've yet to be able to test it thoroughly, of course, but I messed around with it a little bit and you'll see it on the screen here. I think it's a cool thing. I think it's gonna be cool for the future and video editing is gonna be crazy within the next two years, I guarantee it. And for those of you who are all color grading, you know, nerds like myself who watch the videos for color grading on this channel, there's a new advanced color management system which automatically converts you know, raw and log or your Rec. 709 and, and whatever to a different color space should you want to. It's awesome so far. I've had no problems with it. I use it at work, I use it here. Not a game changer, but it's nice to have in the software finally like some other softwares have. I feel like we should have had it. We just now got it nonetheless. Exporting has also been updated, meaning that the exports are gonna be a little bit faster than they were. They're allowing you to use hardware acceleration, which was previously not supported from my knowledge. And if it was, I didn't know, but now they're definitely stating, hey, you can use hardware acceleration to export, which is a lot faster than software, of course. And in particular, if you shoot or edit or export in ProRes or ProRes RAW, any of those formats, they say that they're supposed to be faster exports for ProRes specifically, which is nice because a lot of people love to shoot in like Apple Log and that's ProRes. And then finally, the last two, they've updated our effects control panel and how we change different things in the software, which I'll show you in a second. They've also updated the UI. It looks different, it feels different. I don't know if I'm a fan, but at least you have some options. Let's hop right in and just look at this really quickly before the video closes. So when you're on this new project page, right? It's your standard Premiere Pro project page. Nothing's changed. You have the new logo for the beta version and all. When you press new project, you get greeted with this new window, right? You can put the name in there. You choose the location for where you want your stuff to save to. And now you have a thing called templates, which you didn't have prior to this, which are pretty much like pre-set up folder systems and panel organization, kind of like workspaces, but with bins and structures and sequences already kind of set up for you. So you can just jump in, drag your footage and get going. Some of you might like that. I'm not really gonna probably use it because I already have my own structure and my own things like that. But should you want to, you have these options. And again, in a future video, we'll cover that. Um, you also have a new import mode, which I will not skip right now. So if you press create, right, you'll have this new importing mode that we've already seen, but it comes afterwards now. Now you no longer make the title for your project and save where you're going to put that project. This is just its own individual import page. Um, I'm going to press skip right there. And as you can see, it says the essential graphics panel has been renamed to graphics templates. And additionally, controls for editing that essential graphics and the captions have been moved to the properties panel. What's the properties panel? It's like effect controls, but maybe more noob friendly. I don't know. That's not a bad thing, by the way. So this is the new workspace. When you're when you're in for the first time, you're greeted with a learning page. I'm gonna close the panel. I don't need the learning tab. I'm gonna close that. But you know, it looks pretty standard. You'll notice that obviously the UI is different. It's a lot more contrasty. Um, the buttons and the text looks different a little bit. Right here is our new generative AI extension tool. Again, won't use it in this video, but that's also something that you should be obviously considering and knowing where that's at. And then you have this over here, the properties panel. Right now we don't have a sequence, so let's make a sequence. If I just click and drag this in like I would anything else, it still looks and works the same. But you'll notice now you have all these different contrasty looking buttons. They're all different. You can change that by going up here to Premiere Pro, settings or appearance and on Windows, it might be file, you know, settings. And you have these new accessibility preferences. Um, here's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. What is that? I am blinded. Um, I, I'm sticking into this dark mode. This is the version that I like. Um, and then if you click that, it makes everything a little bit more contrasty and easier to see on the eyes, especially if you have bad eyes or you're older or there's just some problem and you like high contrast, you have the option. Uh, you also have that dark mode that we started in and you can see that difference right there. Um, so I'm gonna do dark mode and probably turn off the high contrast. And this is uh, of course the new visuals and the new you know UI. I'm not covering the UI in this video because there's not much for me to say about it personally. It looks different. They're all the same tools, except for the generative extension AI. And then the only thing that I want to touch on really quickly before we end here is if you click on your clip, 
let's say you have an edit, you have a sequence, right? Instead of going over here, which by the way, my effect controls is no longer here, right? So let's go Windows Effect Controls. This looks different. It's always collapsed to start. Not a fan of that. That's kind of annoyed me, but it is what it is right now. Um, you have your standard effect controls. You can still do the same thing, scale it in, move things around, you know, and do whatever. But on this right side of the screen, you have property panel, which is pretty much effect controls, but but it's more laid out in a way that someone, let's say, who's new to video editing and has used like CapCut can probably understand. You can change your audio right here on a slider. That's actually nice. Before you had to do it, this little bar down here, you can change the speed instead of right clicking speed duration. You can go right here to just speed and you can just change the speed right there. So there's a few cool things, kind of like Final Cut has, kind of like DaVinci has, but you can do all the same stuff you've did before. And it's the same thing, but you have this panel, which obviously is a preference. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I don't know. But those are the major changes. Nothing in the export window from my knowledge so far has been changed. So really the UI has been changed. The AI has been added. Um, obviously they say they have faster exporting and faster encoding. Hopefully that's true. And if all that's true, that is what we know about at least the beta version right now. Um, we can assume that it's going to be in the public version at one point, but we'll see. I'm going to be using it more, testing things out, of course, as I make more videos for the channel. And over time, I'll probably update this video with like all the things and how they work. Um, but for now, let me know what you guys think about the AI tool. What have you used it? What do you feel? Um, what do you think about the visuals? That terrible white horror who signed off on that? Let me know what you guys think. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Good night. It's nighttime. I've been busy. I normally film on the day. It's nighttime.